Hello, everybody. Hello. My name is Paul. Welcome, one and all. Thanks for hanging out while I've been sick. We are back. Leisure Suit Larry 3. And in case uh, you guys forgot um, what's in my pocket, uh, my Grenadilla is hard and black and extremely, extremely ear. Let's get moving. So last time, let's recap. So we are here. Kalalao divorced us in so many words. Well, so many walking around bed. We got fired from our job. Uh, all we have to our name is some soap on a rope we found. Or that piece of wood. And uh, a brand new credit card. Oh, and the MasterCard logo is two little Sierra logos. Adorbs. How will you ever be able to use this credit card when everyone on the island knows you personally and also knows you have current assets of Zipola? Um, oh, for those um, nerds who are noticing, and kudos to you, nerd is not a derogatory nor a pejorative, you'll notice that uh, I found a way. One of the developers of uh, Scum actually reached out to me, Scum VM here, and told me about this little feature that was kind of tucked away, which will disable that thing called dithering, where if uh, a game, which is only capable of displaying like 16 or 32 colors or what have you, can't display the color at once, it will dither, but it, call, it causes this kind of crosshatch pattern that you're seeing here. I'm going to try and superimpose this. But if you turn that off, apparently the color information is in there, it's just the engine can't process it. But now scum can, so things look a little bit nicer, a little bit crisper. Not exactly true to form, but whatever, it looks pretty. Let me know what you guys think. All right, that nerdery out of the way. Let's see if I can finally get my divorce finalized. And I think there's a couple of places I still need to visit. Nope, nope, all the attorneys are still busy, so nothing we can do there. Well, I guess we will just continue upon our merry way and find out what kind of adventures we can get later. I'm doing that again. Make me stop talking like that. I gotta say that the graphics do look crisper than ever before. Here we go. Hey, we can go over to Facet. I've always wanted to visit Facet, which is in the belly of a gigantic whale. And like Jonah, we shall go. This, I believe, is called Fat City. Yes, indeed, Fat City. It's a gym, which is a, a wonderful name for a gym. Why they decided they wanted to kind of censor it out, I don't know. It's kind of a surprising show of sensitivity for them. Then again, they did make their mascot a whale. Fat City has an entrance ramp disguised as a whale. Doesn't it remind you of the Louvre? I don't know why I'm Scottish, not French. Yeah! Uh. Oh, Roland MT32, take me away! You're inside the lobby of Fat City, the island's newest and brightest health spa. This place has everything, so there's a juice bar with a blender. Looks like someone kind of taped their sock to the bulletin board? Uh, advertisements I find totally uninspiring. Is that indeed a sock? Nope, socks do not exist in the world of Leisure Suit Library 3. Hello, says Robert. New in town? Uh, no, I live here, dude. Talk man. You certainly have an interesting way with clothes, insults the man behind the counter. Oh, I guess I was supposed to sound a bit, bit more derogatory. Ugh. Robin looks bored. Do you have nothing better to do than to stand here talking to me? Hmm. Can I join the gym? No, uh, join club. Members only. Yeah, I want to become a member. Become member? Okay, well, I guess I can't actually join the gym. Maybe this will become evident later. I don't know, but I don't need to be here anyway. I don't need to work out. I am God's gift to women. Well, I got points for drinking water. That's something. Still don't know what I'm doing. It's such a confusing layout, too, because each of these paths, like the upper and the lower one, take you to a different place. Bottom takes you somewhere, the right takes you somewhere, the upper right takes you somewhere different. Ugh. Hmm, just poking through my inventory again, trying to get a grasp on what the heck I'm supposed to be doing. I kind of remember, it, it gives you a hint here. It's kind of obtuse, but it's saying that the credit card would be basically worthless on the island because everyone knows, like all five people that live on the island know that you're flat broke and divorced. But there's one person who loves money that doesn't know me at all. There she is. Hey, Tawny. How about you? Uh, you want my credit card? I like how I say just look at her and then she just like stands up. It's like, here, enjoy the entire view. Hmm. I guess I was wrong about the whole dithering thing. Hi, Tawny. Because I remember there being like dithering all throughout here. But then there's that really pronounced checkerboard pattern here for shadows. 
which it didn't get rid of or doesn't know what to do with or it's supposed to be there. I... I don't know. I need to look up more about what dithering actually does. Well, here you go. Here's my card. Take all the money I supposedly have. Here, Toddy. I can see how you enjoy shopping. I'd like you to have my credit card. That kind of just to her lips. Oh, Larry, it's the perfect gift. The right size, right shape, and the right color. Gold. Yeah, that's back in the day when gold cards were like the best. Now we have platinum and titanium and those cards that weigh like five pounds and about the weight of a brick. And I think I know the perfect way to express my appreciation to you, to, uh, come here, big boy. Yes, currying favors for sex, Larry. Oh, jeez. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Now I think... <laughs> so we're just gonna dry hump until the cows come home, are we? So I think, depending, zoom in ease, yeah, depending on how high your, uh, your filth level is, this will or will not be animated at all. Souvenirs! Get your genuine non do like souvenirs! Oh wow, souvenirs! What you selling? I'm selling these fine leather jackets. I mean, Ginzo knives. Uh, excuse me if I remember with you. Ah, uh, something else has popped up. Well, why, 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 you think yourself? That was rude. As you lie there and take it, do something about it. So what do you think, lady? Would you like to have one of these fine Ginsu knives to take home for a souvenir? For you, I'd make a special deal. Ooh, is it really a bargain? I love bargains. Most assuredly so. It's made with hand-rubbed hickory handles, a blade of the finest Sheffield carbonized steel, drawn from the hottest 100 years old oak charcoal fires, honed to perfection by small and older virgins, and guaranteed for life. Or until you leave this beach, whatever comes first. I'll take it. Does it come in a carrying case? No, but uh, I bet you could come in a carrying case. I don't... What? That'll be $30. Uh, let me see now. Um, oh gosh, I've only got 20 bucks in cash left. Wait, I do have this new shiny credit card. Uh, here, uh, hold this knife for me, will ya? That little jingle makes it sound like I'm keeping it. Thanks ever so much, madam. It's a real pleasure doing business with a real pro. Turning back to you, Tony says, I'm sorry to interrupt us, my little shopper whopper, but you know, I just can't resist a purchase. And now, where were we? Whoop! You pause to contemplate her rude behavior. Were you too offended by her thoughtless interruption to continue making love to the beautiful young Tawny? <gasps> nope. <laughs> oh my god, that looks painful. <laughs> <laughs> that looks so bad. <laughs> that doesn't look comfortable or sexy at all. Suddenly, you become aware that hundreds of tiny sand crabs have been, that have been crawling around inside your Lisa suit pants since you first lay down on the sand. Yeah! Ow! <laughs> Quick, get off me! Whoa, is my love making that good for you, my little middle-aged mall man? <laughs> Pulsating spider Christ, you cry, Tony! I've got a terrible case of crabs! That's not what a sand crab looks like at all. A crab, shouts Tawny. I should have known better than to have anything to do with a local, especially an older local, and a pudgy older local at that. Oh my god, as you pull a large crab from your pants, Tawny says, like, man, I refuse to party with any guy who's so socially irresponsible. Get lost, Placido Domingo. Well, so much for that, Larry. It's Tawny, baby, does this mean we're through? There's no response. Oh. Well, at least I got rubbed and I got a nice little uh, knife out of the deal, I think. Do I still have that? I do! Ginsu knife! Now, the Ginsu knife, I think, comes in super, super handy because now that Tawny is basically an enemy, we're gonna try and take her for everything she's worth, which is right now 20 bucks. So, the point, the play is here, here's what I'm thinking. We have this little piece of grenadilla wood or grenadilla. Granadilla is hard and black. So it looks a bit suggestive, but we're gonna make it even more suggestive. Whoop, Lorena Bobbitt reference. Oh, okay. My my plan was I was going to use my knife to carve the statue or starve the carve the wood. Not just starve the wood. Let me say that again. Rewind. My plan was that we were going to use the knife to carve the wood into a suggestive statue that we would sell as a souvenir. 
and then maybe we can disguise ourselves. So first thing I have to do is sharpen the knife, which we can only do right here on the stairs. There we go. You rub your dull Ginsu knife back and forth on the smooth concrete steps of the casino. It sounds like I'm kind of, kind of shifting sand together, Roland, but whatever. I appreciate the attempt. Much to your surprise, it becomes razor sharp. Without thinking, you hastily shove it back in your pocket. Ow. Oh, that reminds me. I gotta change my uh, expletive back. Pulsating Spider Christ. I That was amazing. Kudos to whoever picked that one. All right, there we go. All right, so now that we have the knife sharp enough, we should be able to carve the wood. There we go. You use your razor sharp Ginsu knife to carefully carve the precious Grenadilla wood into what you hope will be accepted as a primitive island native sculpture. I didn't know he had this kind of artistic talent in him. You just kind of get out of the swinging game and just kind of go into art. Uh, do we have to look at it? Oh, we kind of have to. There it is. You've always been a true admirer of the African primitive school of sculpture. Uh, I like how he even puts this like little evil face into it. Let's never look at that again. Oh, hello. Hey, wait a second. I see a big bald head sticking out of that cabana and someone's calling guard and it's like, hi, who are you? Uh, oh, okay. There's a lot of, there's a lot of activity here. Wow, says Bill. Take a look at that bikini. Open the door a little, would you, Bill? Um, well, A, you didn't change behind a closed doors, and this Bill guy was facing the wrong direction entirely, and that is indeed Al Lowe back there. Hi, Al. I couldn't bear the thought. <laughs> oh, it's William Skirvin, world-famous artist talking to Al Lowe, the ne'er-do-well game designer. Bill ignores you as usual. Well, let's see, we'll see if we can talk to Al, even though he looks kind of busy back there. Al is too busy working on something else to talk to you. Okay, is he just taking a bit? Yeah, he's, he's got his pants down around his ankles. I wonder, since that lady changed, if she left anything in this cabana. Let's see, look, uh, floor, I guess? Does not appear so. Uh, it doesn't appear I can do anything with him. Can I rub his head is the question. Nope, too smart for this game, but look at it, it's just, it's just begging for it. I want to, I want to put my hands all over it. All right, so that was phase one of the plan. Phase two is, I'm going to, I need to disguise myself as a native, so get one of those cool little, uh, what do they call it, little palm leaf uh, dress things. And I have a knife, so I can cut some down, I just gotta find some. Where can I find some palm? All the palm trees around here are fake, there's nothing I can do. Actually, over here seemed like it was our best bet. Oh, looks like they all wrapped up. Um, yeah, there's like a p huge palm jungle right back here. Cut. Oh, like, oh, it's a grass skirt. Uh, cut grass. Let's try that. Grass is unsuitable for my needs. Uh, what kind of grass would be appreciated to cover my midriff? How about this gray grass over here? No. How about this grass here? No. How about this grass here? No. Grass, grass everywhere, and not a drop to chop. There we go. This grass over here looks pretty good. Looks like it stands out more than the others. No. Oh, found a place I've never been before. Oh, and the and the and the credits finally continue. The credits are like, well, what took you so long, asshole? What an interesting park. A lovely television set sits beneath an attractive hanging lamp facing a park bench, all situated near a gurgling stream. This is actually really nice. Hmm, looks like the TV might work. Okay, uh, turn on TV. Toin? There we go. Hmm, how do I fix the vertical hold on this thing? Yeah, too bad the island doesn't have cable. Well, that was pointless. So what's this over here? Look, table. There's a newspaper lying on the table. Okay, well, get. All right, and I sit down immediately with it. Ooh, let's see. What is happening in None Tonight News? Am I going to read it? Oh, I have to do something. Okay, well, read paper. I guess he's not reading it right now. He's just kind of leafing through it, just gazing off into space. Reading the island newspaper, you find an advertisement for the casino showroom. Now playing the big new all-girl review. It's got T's, it's got A's, it's got pre-recorded music. It's the latest and greatest show from producer Irving Guis. Guis? Guis. Maybe that's a reference to something. I don't know. See, the casino made it sound like inside this newspaper, or maybe he said pamphlet. Uh, you could get a coupon to go see a free show. Is not to be. Can I cut this grass? 
No. Okay. I'm a bit stymied. I don't know where I'm going or what I'm doing. Help! Oh, here's another place I've never been. Oh, you see, look, you can't even notice. Like, Alright, so here... Where am I? There I am. So up here is Dewey Cheatham and Howe, and then down here, I guess, the casino, and then there's actually, I guess, a path this way, which I thought was the same thing to get to the lawyer's office, but nope. If you go kind of like sneak down and then over, there it is. Oh, cre sneaky, sneaky. I also used to think when I was a kid, uh, this kind of gray area here, I thought it was like a, like a fissure or a crack in the earth or something that you would fall into and this grass is covering it dangerously, which probably would be, I think it's just the shadow of this tree. But then I figure this building up here would have done something about it because it would trap every single person who wanted to come in and see the show ever. But this looks like grass I can cut. Yes, the tough tropical grasses slices your hands to ribbons but refuses to budge. If only you had some way to cut... Ugh, idiot. There we go. Shing, shing, shing. Your razor sharp ginsu knife slices through the blades of grass like a hot samurai sword through a tub of cheap margarine. There we go. Congratulations! You are now the proud owner of some long blades of grass. Alright, let's see. Um, weave grass? There, yeah, that works. You carefully weave the wild grass into what you hope will pass for a primitive island native outfit. Larry, you're surprising me at every turn. Look at your artistry. Weaving grass and carving wood. D really, you should you should open up an Etsy shop, my friend. And here we go. It's a nice little cave system. Uh, ooh, this looks like it can cause death and murder. You know what? You know what? We actually haven't had a death at all. And how rare and kind of bizarre for a Sierra game not to have a death like right out of the gate. Well, let's fix this right now. Oogly boogly dick balls! <laughs> I don't think it's a dick balls at all, but I'm really doing that. Well, Larry, it looks like you're now fully convinced that gravity really sucks. <laughs> Hang on, what did that actually say? I forgot. Oogly boogly dung balls. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. <laughs> Alright, what's our next one? Alright, well anyway, so now we can go into the game and get what we actually came here for, which I think are these flowers. There we go, pretty. We got some nice blue flowers. A few fresh orchids from the walls of the crevasse. It seems like the reverb on this uh, rolling is really kind of getting out of control. Oh, I want to get some red ones too. Okay. So now the point is, so you have our little grass skirt, but now we also have to kind of complete our uh, little ruse with an orchid lay. There we go. Again, Larry showing his artistry and skill by doing stuff I can never do. Welcome to the islands, Mr. Laffer. Oh, that this reverb is really getting to me. Hang on, let me fix this. Alright, well that was weird. Yeah, it's the price you pay for Roland sound stuff. Let's go see what's up in here. Chip and... Chip and Dale? I guess this is like a mail review. You are outside none tonight's famous striptease joint Chip and Dale's. A large cliff mostly prevents your passage to the west. In the center of this area is a large clump of island grass. There's a sign on the door. Alright, well, looks sign. Uh, Chippendale's none tonight's finest adult entertainment. Closed! Hmm. I think that'll be open a little bit later when... Oh, I don't want to spoil it for people who don't... Uh, oh! Another new place. You're outside the world-famous comedy hut of fast food comedy clubs. They appear to be open. Hmm. Dead Pettit is open. What have we here? Another comedy show would be like the cabaret all over again. The world famous comedy hut is filled with people having a mildly uproarious time. This looks like oh look look Al and uh, and Bill are here. Hi there. Look Al. Hey, is that Al over there? Look, Bill. Hey, is that Bill Skirvin over there? <laughs> I wonder if the rest of these people also represent other people. But let's see if we can talk to Al. Talk, not walk. Talk. Oh wait, I can actually if I get close to him, I can actually say what I want to to Al. So just say what you want to say. Oh God, I can just I can say whatever I want to Al. Um, do you give saxophone lessons? Hey, I've got an idea. How about if you and I sit in a comedy club and we make Larry walk up to us and say something like, Do you give saxophone lessons? Har, 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 har. Do you give saxophone lessons? Uh, are you crazy? No way. That's so lame. Larry would never say that. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Uh, this is not a good idea. Let's get out of here. Do you give saxophone lessons? Really? Whoa! 
I get points for that, and then they zip off. I'm gonna sit in his seat. Oh, it's still warm. Oh, okay, it wants me to sit in this seat. Fine. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the world famous comedy hunt is proud to present a legend in his own mind, Paul Paul. That's me. Good evening, ladies and gems. Okay, folks, we're gonna try something a little different tonight. Tell me the name of three favorite ethnic groups. I don't like the way this is going. It doesn't matter to me which we choose. I got enough jokes to insult anyone. Uh, ethnic group one. Oh boy, oh boy. Uh, let's play this safe. Let's see, ethnic group one would be Trump fans. Uh, let's see, cheerleaders and chickens. Sure. Did you hear about the unlucky cheerleader guy? He filed for divorce because he lived in a two-story house. One story was, I'm not in the mood, and the other was, I got a headache. Yay! Hey, hey, hey. Do you know how they take the census in a cheerleader neighborhood? Easy, flood the basements. I don't get it. Is that because they all run out? They all live in the basement, I guess? What's the difference between two terrorists and two Trump fan women with PMS? You can negotiate with terrorists. Once the chicken football team played the cheerleader football team, at the end of the three quarters the score was tied, nothing to nothing. Just then a train went by, the chicken team heard the whistle and thought the game was over and went home. Six plays later the cheerleader team scored. Ah, uh, oh those cheerleaders, we do. My wife just bought us a new water bed, I call it the Dead Sea. Yesterday we went to the meat department in the new cannibal supermarket down in the beautiful downtown noon tonight mall. They were running a special on human brains. Trump fan brains were $4.99 a pound, chicken brains were $6.99 a pound, and cheerleader brains were $39 a pound. I asked the butcher, if Trump fan brains are $4.99 a pound and chicken brains are $6.99 a pound, how could cheerleader brains be $39 a pound? He replied, do you know how many cheerleader guys we've got to go through to get a pound of brains? A young lumberjack had a terrible accident with a chainsaw and went to his doctor's office for stitches. As the doctor began to apply an anesthetic to the lumberjack, just laughing, Doc, I won't be needing any painkiller for a little wound like this. The doctor replied, son, this is going to hurt a lot. Are you sure? Yeah, of course I'm sure, said the lumberjack. While in my entire life, I've only found pain twice. Once when I squatted down to relieve myself in the woods and got my testicles caught in a bear trap. And the doctor cried, my God, that's terrible. What was the second time? It's like when I reached the end of that chain. What? I, I guess they're implying that he had to stretch his testicles far enough that he got to the other end of the... Whatever. These are awful. Do you know how to get 25 chicken guys in a phone booth? Throw in a dollar. Oh my god, this would be so horrible if you were horrible enough to put actual ethnic groups into this. Jesus. A 70-year-old man was in the doctor's office sobbing uncontrollably. Doc, you gotta help me. I recently married a 21-year-old gorgeous girl built like a brick shipyard. All she wants to do is have sex with me all day long. The doctor replies, some problem. Why do you need my help? He's like, I can't remember where I live. Does this just go on forever? Do you know the most dangerous job in a Trump fan neighborhood? Riding shotgun on the garbage truck. Don't get it. I, I don't get it at all. Do you hear about the cheerleader man who was so lazy he married a pregnant woman? Oh, boo. How do I boo? Once I had a great thing going with this Eskimo girl. Unfortunately, she broke it off. Boo. Hey, Paul, you shout. That joke's so old, it's got gray hair. Oh, yeah? With my last breath. I cursed Zoidberg. <laughs> that is not the context I wanted to use that one. <laughs> Some guys just don't have a way with hecklers. All right, that means we need a new one. A Trump fan walks into a bar with a pig under his arm. The bartender says, did you win him in a raffle? And the big replied, yup. Why did the Trump fan pervert cross the road? Because he was stuck to the back of the chicken. They, okay, let's just fast forward the rest of this. These are so bad. Oh God, it's been forever. And now, because you've been so patient, I'll take through my famous impersonation of a duck. And it goes something like this. There he goes, he actually turns into an actual duck. Ladies and gentlemen, Paul Paul, get off the stage. Look, he's getting a sitting ovation. Oh, my apologies. That took forever, I'm just sleepy now. So like all my comedian friends always say, always leave him laughing. So. 
we're not going to listen to that, so we're going to end it here. So, <laughs> that was the worst comedy show ever. Were the 80s really that bad? Probably, yes. Anyway, we'll leave this off for now, and then we'll continue on our journey. We still got to go rip off Tawny. Uh, we're going to wear a lay and a grass skirt. It's, uh, yeah, this, this is what we were reduced to. So, until then, as always, good night, Jelly Beans. Good night.